when we go into what are the key steps for developing a PSA. Okay, so this is uh, one of the popular representations of the popular six step process. The first is to walk and map the value stream. So in any process, the value stream cannot be mapped sitting in the office. Okay, the team or the person responsible or the people responsible have to go to the processes, look at the processes, keep time charts, you know, take, do a detailed analysis and then be able to do and then map the value, do the value stream map. Okay, so next is to identify waste on the current state. Okay, which is put very simply here, but that's really a very, it's a large ex exercise, requires a lot of teamwork. Then redesign the process to eliminate waste, which is the future state. Okay, this is one. Then this is an even more advanced state where we are linking process and creating pull systems. Okay, it's a more advanced state. And then we create the, the final future state of the map, which has got waste elimination and pull. different pull systems and things like that. And then you have to actually implement this, right? So I can have it map current state, map future state, and it can remain on my wall as a future state map. I have to go back and implement these in my site. And once I implement it, again, you go back and improve it and try to the cycle continues. Almost like the PDCA cycle, which we are used to. Okay. This is from a value stream mapping perspective. Now, a more detailed way of looking at this. Okay. And this is taken from the reference you see here is we define customer values and the process. Okay. We looked at the restaurant example. What is the value? What is the process? You have to look at it. And for this, you have to walk to the process. If I'm going to do a value stream of the restaurant, I have to go look at the kitchen, look at how the order is taken, look how the order flows to the kitchen, look at how the delivery boy routes, what is the kind of information they have, all of that. Okay. So here you walk the process, identify tasks and flows, identify value added and waste steps. Okay. Create the current state VSM. Okay, we have to understand what goes into the current state VSM. Okay, then analyze the map to determine opportunities for improvement for future state. Okay, so this becomes important. Okay, we have to look at identify bottlenecks, other flow improvement, brainstorm. So this brainstorming I will talk about later. Value stream mapping is not a single person or a single team exercise. It is a group exercise for both for getting ideas into how the whole uh, stream works because people should not well generally have a more siloed view, but you need to integrate the silos. So you need people who can collaborate and understand what happens from sub process to sub process. Okay. Then you create the transformation plan and then like we discussed, implement the transformation plan. Mm -hmm. It's again, easy to put it on paper, but it is a challenge, but then you go back to again, repeating as we did in the earlier. So I've given you two views. Okay. This is a more detailed view. But sir, why the transformation plan is not going to the defined customer the first? first. Yeah. Okay. Here we are definitely assuming that it's the same process and the customer value is already, I'm making the same thing. Same. But if I'm going to change my product or something, I definitely will have to go. Okay. okay. And uh, this is a time, this is kind of a timeline that's that's given, okay, based on what uh, this group has experienced. But again, this might be different for different groups. I think this is only a guideline that's given here. You'll have to take it, implement it, and see how it moves. So you can you can uh, see they have given they, what they said is they have to prepare a charter. If you go to the reference, they have a form for a charter. They talk about how to do or to do the preparation, the briefing one, briefing two, briefing three, and the transformation plan as you can see it's months to years and it depends on several uh, circumstances in which the uh, the situation or the, or the, the uh, process is being mapped and need, changes need to be made. Okay again I come back to this because this is important we have value stream we have processes we have tasks so we are the stream we have some processes okay we have tasks in the processes and we are the macro perspective and we are the micro perspective. I'm not going to repeat this because I think I've emphasized it, but this is just another way of showing the same information. Okay. Now we go a little more. We discuss the metrics. I think all of you have an idea of what the metrics are, but let's go with a little bit of formal definitions. Okay. So we, these are the metrics we looked at. We looked at process time. We looked at lead time 
activity ratio percentage complete and accurate uh, we looked at this comparison okay which we did last time and you saw we did we went through these calculations okay i'm not going to go through it again but if we go into uh, a, a graphic to represent okay i think you can visualize this so if this is the lead time what you see here okay the process time is what are what is the shaded areas okay the total of the shaded areas now the process time can have value adding parts and it can have non value adding unnecessary necessary non value adding. okay so i can reduce lead time by reducing idle time okay reducing the idle parts of whatever is there i can reduce lead time i can reduce processing time also by remo removing unnecessary non value adding. okay so both improvements are possible and here we are looking at might be we are looking at within a process if we look at this or this could also be across processes but basically the concept of reducing both lead time as well as reducing process time by eliminating waste is a key okay so if i look at the definition of process time is the time it takes to actually perform the work if one is able to work on it uninterrupted includes the 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 uh, what you call the two unnecessary you know a non value added and necessary non value added we have seen these definitions from work sampling and all of that okay so the same concept comes here lead time is a elapsed time from the time work is made available until it's completed and passed on to the next person or department okay so that's a lead and it's the same graphic you can see that just color coded for little more visibility of you know what which which element comes with now activity ratio is the percentage of time anything is being done to the work passing through the system whether value adding or not so we can see that this is that is the process time by lead time and if we actually look at the waste at a macro level it's 100 minus the actual output. okay the percentage complete and accurate of of input that's deemed usable as is by the person doing the work okay that is for one process and if you take the roll percentage it's the product of or percentage completed now in most uh, applications of uh, value stream map this is used very commonly process time and lead okay these metrics are not used very commonly but they are interesting metrics to have and probably uh, interesting to be able to see how the future state map compares with this. okay especially the percentage completed accurate obviously the activity ratio we can derive from the earlier two metrics 